Hello, we now study Davis Boldin and Sillout index uh, coefficient for cluster evaluation. These are internal validation measures, and internal validation measures do not have the ground truth available to them. So, the labels or the real ground truth labels are not available. So, for evaluation, they use the proximity matrix. This matrix has been computed with whatever distance measure is provided. So, among the four internal measures, we have studied beta CV and Dunn index, and today we come to Davis Boldin and Sillout coefficient. So, as a recap, the proximity matrix stores the values of proximities for all pairs of n data objects. It is an n by n matrix, and how we compute this is from a previous video. The link is here at the bottom of the slide. So the Davis Boldin index. For this, we will first find out the dispersion or spread of points around the cluster mean, computed as the for a cluster CI. See the Davis Boldin index will be computed for pairwise clusters, pairwise clusters (BBIJ). So sigma mu i is computed as the square root of these. Uh, the within cluster variation, the distance is squared summation over the whole cluster, as it is sigma mu i divided by the number of points. Then, so the having computed sigma mu i, sigma mu j, the dBij for a pair of clusters C i and C j, it will measure how compact the clusters are compared to the distance between the means, cluster means. So it is the summation of this dispersion for mu uh, for cluster i and cluster j as a ratio of the distance between means. So, this we would compute for all the pairs of clusters. The Davis Boldin index for the whole clustering is taken as the sum over all these k clusters, the average of it. But note here, for each cluster, we are taking the max. That means, for each cluster CI, we pick the max dBIJ. Again, we will illustrate this in our example in the next slide. But for each cluster CI, we pick the cluster CJ that yields the maximum dBIJ. And for the dB index to be good, it should be small. The smaller the dB value, the better the clustering. So, we look at the example. To compute the Davis Boldin index, we have seven points and the coordinates are here. First, we compute the means. So, the mean for cluster 1, which comprises of these points A, B, C, is mu 1 is 1, the first coordinate, and second is 7 by 3, similarly mu 2 and mu 3. Then, we compute the dispersion. So, the dispersion for the first cluster is given by the square distances from the mean summed over all the points. So, for the first point, we get this value of 4 by 3 squared, then it is 1 by 3 squared, and for the last point, C point, we get 5 by 3 squared. So, this value we get for sigma mu 1. Sigma mu 2 is for cluster 2, where we have only two points, D and G. And the mean is 4, 3.5. So, the variations is 0.5 squared plus 0.5 squared. And we get overall 0.5. Similarly, we compute sigma mu 3. Now, the Davis Boldin index for the cluster pair 1, 2. So, we take the first dispersion sigma mu 1 plus sigma mu 2 and divided by the distance between means. So, the distance between the uh, means of mu1, mu2. So, this is for the first coordinate, 3 squared, and this for the second coordinate. So, the value of 0. 0.639. Similarly, we compute dB13, dispersion for cluster 1, cluster 3, and the distance between mu uh, means. And similarly, dB23. Now, while computing Davis Boldin index, we have to pick up for each cluster 
the maximum value of dbij so for c1 we have 1 2 and 1 3 so the bigger value is 0.778 we pick that up for c2 it is 1 2 and 2 3 so again we pick the bigger one and for the last one third cluster it is 2 3 1 3 so 0.778 so this is how we compute the davis bolden index for the entire clustering so i hope this makes it clear the computation of davis bolden index first pairwise and then for the overall clustering and before that the dispersions for the individual clusters which we found in this manner so that is how we compute db so now we come to the sillhout coefficient it is a measure of cohesion and separation of clusters so the mean distance from a point x i to points in its own cluster this is what we would first need because you want cohesion that is the distance of point uh, within the cluster and separation is distance of a point from the other clusters so the mean distance mu in xi is the distance of xi to points in its own cluster see mu in xi is computed as the summation over all xj belonging to c y hat i which is the cluster of xi this is the standard terminology we have used we have kept y hat i is the assigned cluster label for xi so all these xj's belong to the same cluster but we don't take it it should not be same as i so the the distance is divided by the number of computations which is one less than the number of points now mean of distances from xi to points in the closest cluster cj see this si a sillhout coefficient for a data one point we are computing the sillhout coefficient for points and then we will do it for the entire uh, clustering so <clears throat> this mu out the minimum value the mean of distances from xi to the closest cluster cj so for xi find out the closest min means the closest cj but of course not the same one to which xi belongs for all the points in cj we find the distances and take the average and then to compute the sellout coefficient for the data point we take the difference of the mu out min minus mu in xi and divided by the max value then the sell out coefficient is the overall mean for all the data points see summation si divided by the number of points okay so we now look at an example for computation of the sell out score values for the different uh, data points so we have seven points here and the coordinates now first let us look at the data point a this is the data point this one this is the data point we are looking at so this belongs to cluster c1 and the closest cluster is this one c3 so this point e it is closest to a uh, from another cluster so for a c3 is closest within cluster distances we have a data point at distance 1 another one at distance 3 so 1 plus 3 by 2 this is the average intercluster distance intra cluster distance sorry and for the distance in a, in the closest cluster we have two points one at a distance 2 the other one at 4 so the average distance is 3 so the sillhout score value for the data point a comes out to be 3 minus 2 by 3 by this formula this computation formula so we get this value for a let us look at e this data point e for this data the closest cluster is again c1 because we can see the closest point is 
two distance away while if we look at the distance from the cluster c2 then we have 1 2 3 see 1 2 3 so closest to c1 so mu in e only two points so there is only one distance to for across the cluster we have three points so from e a is at point distance 2 b is at distance 3 and c is at distance 5 so this is 3.33 giving a sill out value of 0.3996 which is higher than the previous data point for f we further find by computing this mu in f mu out f minimum value and the sill out value comes out to be 0.429 so there is an increase in the sill out values which shows certain things about the data points which we will see uh, very shortly in the next slide and in fact we will need more investigation into the computation of sell out values in uh, some future video si value close to plus one indicates xi is closer to points in its own cluster while close to zero means it is closer to the boundary and if it is close to minus 1, this indicates xi is closer to other clusters and may be misclustered. So, the sell out value close to plus 1 for the entire clustering shows good clustering. Okay, so we have values from minus 1 to plus 1, where we want that the value should be closer to plus 1. That means it is a good uh, clustering and minus 1 in fact means that the data point might have been put in the wrong cluster. So, we will take up one such example where we get a negative value of SI coefficient very shortly. So, thank you. Thanks for watching.